Opinions and ideas expressed in the following Moraine Valley Broadcast Channel recording are those of its creators and do not represent the views of Moraine Valley Community College. And hello, this is uh, Dr. Darren Schreck once again with uh, some PSC 103 Intro to Political Science students uh, giving me their uh, thoughts on some uh, political questions and non-political questions uh, that uh, I posted for them in the uh, previous weeks. And with me this week is Sally. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing good, thanks. And Peter, how are you? I'm good. Okay, and Jose Maria? I'm good. All right, everybody's good, so that's a good way to start. And uh, our first question, let me throw it to Peter real quick. Uh, we talk about politics a lot and polit- uh, political involvement of uh, individuals, uh, you know, whether they're young or old. And I threw this question out to everybody, and Peter, we'll start with you. Are you a political individual? Um, no, but I do try to be, but in all honesty, I don't truly know what to believe through social media and all the um, news radio, news channels and stuff, they're very one-sided, whereas Fox is Republican and CNN is very liberal and all that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know necessarily what's true and what's very biased. Okay. And Jose Maria, how about you? Uh, honestly, I'm not. I'm not really big into politics. It seems that I am when the presidential elections come around. I will follow the elections and the types of bills they are going to propose, but when the election is over, it seems to be as if I were like Hillary Clinton and just disappear. I really should be, though, because some of the policies of certain politicians could have a huge impact on my family or myself. Okay. Sally, how about you? I feel that I am a political person just because I try to keep updated. Lately, I haven't, but with big issues, I do take stances on them, and people, like, do come to me and say, oh, what do you think of this? And I tell them my opinion, but I also say my opinion is biased, so don't just listen to me. You have to look at other resources, so I would say yes. Okay. And what would be a big issue for you? In politics. Right now, my biggest issue is the environment, considering climate change, our skeptics are basically running the government right now, so I'm not really happy with that. So. Okay. What would be a big issue for you, Jose Maria? Right now, the big issue would be, I would say, what's going on with uh, immigration. Okay. Uh, it's something that could affect my family and a lot of uh, the bills that Trump wants to propose or, you know, like he says, he wants to build a wall, which I doubt will happen, but... Like, that's a really big issue because it just brings up a bigger, uh, like a more, how you would say it, like a rough environment, you know, mm-hmm. for everybody right now. All right. So for you, there's a, a personal stake in that issue. Yes, for my family. Yeah, some of my family, yes. Okay. And Peter, how about you? Uh, I would probably have to go with somewhere along with the environment, too, uh, just because a lot of people take advantage of it and don't realize that it doesn't come back overnight and a lot mm-hmm. of stuff isn't unlimited resources such as oil and stuff, whereas they're just destroying it and taking everything they can. And with the rainforests and stuff like that, once they take out the trees and stuff, that, that soil is gone and not really good for the next thousands of years. So, Okay. Now, when you talk about these issues, let's tie it in with question number two. When you see candidates running for office, and I'll, and I'll give you my personal opinion. I think a lot of what you see in a political campaign is highly idealistic. This is just their beliefs of how things should work. And then there's a reality that comes along with it. So when you hear these politicians talking about issues themselves in a political campaign, do you find them to be idealistic or do you think that a campaign tends to be more realistic in, in what they're trying to convey to the public? Jose Maria? Uh, I 100% agree with, the, with you on uh – it being idealistic because that's all political campaigns really are. And all of the political campaigns that I've seen, unfortunately, have been idealistic. All the politicians really have to do is agree with the views that certain uh, key areas hold and try to win them. Candidates such as Trump will claim they will build a wall just to gain votes. And it sounds nice uh, when he's saying it, but the possibility of that happening is not really good. Um, All the political campaigns do is paint a picture, and when the candidates win, they don't really do much. And I can also see that tying in with our split government, mm-hmm. you know, with the House, Congress, and all. But uh, I feel like, yeah, it's all idealistic. Okay. Do you uh, v- Have you ever voted before? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so when you see a political campaign, do you think it's more or less uh, political rhetoric or garbage and that kind of takes you away from voting for candidates? Yes, because, a big, you know, an example is that I, I was on Facebook and I went on fa- – like there was a Trump rally in Nevada. Mm-hmm. It was like on – Facebook Live, so I sat and watched it. You know, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in what these people have to like, want what they're gonna hear. And the whole time, I, you know, not once did Trump say like, this is what I'm going to do. Like he just said, 
don't worry, Nevada, I'm not taking your guns away, uh, he said. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to build that wall. And then everybody started chanting, build a wall. And then uh, he wrapped it up with uh, Hillary for prison and, like, let's lock her up. And then everybody started che- cheering and chanting, lock her up. And I was just like, what did I just watch? Like, he didn't even say anything that he was going to do. It right. was just it was like nothing a, of substance. Yeah. And, and, and all candidates tend, tend, at least in my opinion, they tend to stay away from the substance. They just try to gin up the support. Yeah, and the whole get. crowd was going crazy. Yeah. Sally, how about you? You find them to be idealistic? I completely find them idealistic. Campaigns are there to get people to vote for them. But they're not there to actually like make their promises come true, like to build a wall, to build off of that, basically. Bush already made that law to build a wall, but they don't have money and resources to make it. People are expecting all these new ideas, but honestly, they can't play out without money or with people and Congress actually following up on it, too. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like the campaigns are just there to get their vote so that they get an office and then they don't do it. Most of it's compromises or it doesn't happen. And if it does happen, it's it's maybe good, maybe bad, depending, but it's not likely. And if you said, and you said there were compromises involved, so when something does happen, it's going to be a watered down version of what they originally exactly. intended it to be. Okay. And Peter, how about you? Uh, they're completely idealistic because pretty much they're saying whatever people want to hear just to get them on their side. Like Trump saying he wanted to build the wall again. Um, he was. He knows that we don't have the funds and stuff to do it, so he's saying Mexico is going to pay for it, which is completely unrealistic and mm-hmm. doesn't really make sense. And a lot of the things they do promise just are completely idealistic because it's just not, not possible, and the public doesn't understand mm-hmm. really how how that stuff comes along and how much it takes to get something like some of the promises the campaigners make to to get it there. Do you, when you hear a a candidate speak in a political campaign, do you kind of like take two steps back before you make a decision on who you're going to vote for? Like, do you, you, do you try to like decipher what that candidate is saying before like jumping in there saying, oh yeah, that that wall is going to be built or uh, climate change is going to be taken care of? Do do you like study up a little bit more? Exactly. Yeah. For you personally, you do? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, like I said, a lot of people like, it sounds great, but who's going to have the money for this? Who's... Who's going to actually maintain the wall if it gets built? Who's There's going to be a lot more to it than just putting up a wall. Okay. And, uh, Sally, you, do you study up on the issues of the candidates as much as you can? Yeah, I do. I Before, like, elections, I look at their main, like, main topics I want to look at, and I see, like, the differences between them. I look at all basically all of them, too, but mostly just the ones, like, I feel, like, actually passionate about, and that's how, like, I kind of base my voting. So mm-hmm. that's how I How do about it. you, Jose Maria? I do, too. Uh, I look them up, but I feel like they're not really honest at all because I remember when Trump was going to win on his website, he had something about he took off the Muslim ban, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just so people could vote for him. And then when he got elected, he brought it back. Like, so it's almost sort of idealistic in, in a sense, too, because they put it on their website mm-hmm. and they'll say it, but then they'll just... They'll go completely against it. Like, they'll change their whole mind when they win. Like throwing something against the wall, see if it sticks. Yeah. If it sticks, we'll go with it until it no longer sticks and we'll then change Mm -hmm. it. Okay. Uh, As I mentioned in the last podcast, I asked the question of what have you been watching on two – name a top ten television program on the local channels. And many people are handing in responses of uh, cable programs which is telling me that nobody watches the regular channels anymore. Everybody's watching cable or Netflix or something like that. So uh, this should be an interesting question because I asked all three, what's on TV that we should be watching? Jose Maria. Uh, Something that's on TV that we should all be watching is one of my favorite shows. Uh, It's Law & Order Special Victims Unit. It's always on most of the time, and it's a TV show about a group of detectives that solve some pretty serious cases in the state of New York. The cases tend to be about uh, sexual assaults, sort of like rape or abuse, Mm -hmm. and the victims tend to be children and the offenders, you know, tend to be people that you don't really would think would do that, such as like priests, uh, teachers, even their own parents. From beginning until end, the show will have you thinking, and it's a great show to watch just to kill time and to actually have you there and be engaged in it and for you not to just fall asleep while you're watching it like most TV shows. That's important. It has to keep you awake. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sally, how about you? Um, currently, I'm watching Marvel's Angels of S.H.I.E.L.D., and 
I was just watching it yesterday, and they threw some shade towards Trump. It was hidden, but if you honestly knew about, like, Trump's campaign, it showed, like, it was actually really funny comparing him to, like, the enemy of S.H.I.E.L.D., but it's basically just a superhero show. If you're nerdy with all that Marvel stuff, then you would enjoy it, so. Okay. And, Peter, how about you? Uh, my personal favorite is Bob's Burgers. It's pretty mm-hmm. good, and it's everybody's so serious nowadays. Bob's Burgers puts a pretty funny twist on real life situations so and that's one of the fox uh animated comedies yes is that what it is okay uh well that wraps up uh our segment this week uh once again i'd like to say uh thank sally for stopping by thank you and jose maria thank you and peter thank you uh, you're welcome and uh once again this is dr darren shrek signing off you can always follow me on twitter at Shrek PhD, S C H R E C K PhD. In the next few weeks, we'll be posting some more uh, podcasts from other Political Science 103 uh, Intro to Poli Sci students. So until then, this is Dr. Darren Shrek signing off, and I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>